This has been 16 months in the making. Obviously, the Martin family ready to get this underway. Opening statement starting at 9 o'clock this morning. Let's bring in News 13 legal analyst Martin E. Jame, who is standing by for more analysis of what we can expect today. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Quick question for you here. We just heard from the Martin family. We just heard Benjamin Crump, their attorney, say this case is about George Zimmerman was a grown man with a gun, Trayvon Martin, a minor with no blood on his hands. So we hear from the prosecution who will go first. Do you think that's going to be the basis of their case? Well, I think that the, uh, Trayvon's family and the prosecution have been in touch with each other throughout. So I do think that, in fact, they've gotten a cue from the prosecutor as far as the way they're going to be navigating this, knowing that the uh, audio expert is no longer going to be testifying, they're going to have to modify or adjust their strategies accordingly. And I think we've just received a bit of a glimpse as to the direction we can anticipate the state taking this. All right, Mark, so as you mentioned there, now one uh, uh, expert analysis not coming into court today. What are you expecting to hear from the defense in their opening statements? Well, we've heard that it's going to be about two hours of uh, opening. Don West is going to be giving the opening statement, not Mark O'Mara. It looks like they've split their duties, and O'Mara will be doing the closing statement at the conclusion of the case, but Don West will be doing the opening. With that said, I think we can see more of uh, Don West that we saw uh, when he was uh, dealing with the audio. He's very measured, not a passionate person, but incredibly smart, very well respected within the legal community. And I think you're going to see him just lay out chapter and verse where the defense will be taking this case. He'll be rather dispassionate, but he'll be very, very clear as far as all the points. And he'll start bringing up all the discrepancies that the defense believes that the state has. And he'll be bringing up the roadmap of why they believe that this is a self-defense case. So you're going to hear a very measured um, presentation, not a lot of passion, not, lot, not a lot of emotion. Now, that's going to be contrasted with Bernie Delaronda, presuming he's the one who's going to be uh, giving the opening on behalf of the state. It's really interesting. You have a juxtaposition of the norms that go on. Typically, it's the state who's more dispassionate, more measured, um, more uh, just uh, quieter. And here, you've got a very fiery uh, prosecutor in Bernie de la Ronda, and you've got a defense who's usually more passionate and fiery, and you've got with Mark O'Mara and Don West, the, the more, more professorial, more um, uh, calm. And so you really have a difference of the way it typically goes. Um, not much unlike the way that they chose the jury. Usually the prosecution is looking for a more uh, state-oriented, more gun rights, um, a more conservative jury. And the defense, on the other hand, here they switched. Yeah, the judge has taken the courtroom, so we're getting ready to finally get started with this long-awaited trial. Good morning. Some housekeeping business that must be taken care of before they can start the opening statements in the George Zimmerman trial. We now know that Mr. John Guy will be doing the opening statements for the prosecution, and Don West will be handling that responsibility for the defense of George Zimmerman. Let's bring in News 13 legal analyst Mark Nijame, who is standing by. Mark, I wanted to talk to you about what just happened there with asking the family to leave the courtroom. Can you explain what happened and what do you think is going to be the outcome for Ben Crump being allowed to stay or asked to stay out of the courtroom? Sure. The rules of sequestration basically say that if you're going to be a witness, if you're on the witness list, then you're not allowed to sit during the court proceedings. And the reason for that is, is that if you're going to serve as a witness, you're not supposed to be prejudiced or biased or be able to maybe mold your testimony to that which you've heard from others. So it's, it's a common uh, matter that's invoked. Okay. And um, um, I'll, I'll pick it back up in a few. The attorneys now in a brief sidebar in our gavel to gavel coverage here of the George Zimmerman trial. If you are now joining us, has not yet come back into the courtroom. They are being brought up now, likely to hear jury instructions before they begin opening statements. John Guy for the state will be giving the opening statements, and we will hear from Don West, who will be giving it for the defense. Also, if you are just now joining us, we just learned that the family for George Zimmerman were asked to leave the courtroom because they did not want them to hear any of the testimony or any of the opening statements as they are witnesses in this case. And by law, they do not want that to somehow influence what may be their testimony when they are called to the witness stand. So Shelly Zimmerman, who has been in court since day one, was asked to leave, and the parents of George Zimmerman um, also asked to leave as they may be called as witnesses. Trayvon Martin's parents, however, were allowed to stay because they are the next of kin 
uh, for Trayvon Martin. So they said there is case law that proves they are allowed to stay. What is that question is whether or not Benjamin Crump can stay in the courtroom. Ben Crump is the attorneys, of course, for the Martin family. He has not been deposed just yet, but he could be called as a witness in this case. So even though he is representing the family of the victim, as of right now, he was asked to leave. And according to our courtroom reporter, Amanda Evans, who is inside the courtroom, he was not happy about having to leave the courtroom. Just as her hands are tied, they'll look at it over lunch and try to see if there's any case law that says he can be allowed to be in there um, at this time. A live look inside the courtroom right now. They are still in that sidebar. The judge has called for the jury to begin their way into the top floor of the Seminole County Criminal Justice Center to begin jury instructions and opening statements in this case. Let's bring in now News 13's legal analyst Mark Nijam, who is standing by. Mark, we kind of cut you off earlier today, uh, earlier this morning, when you were explaining why the family had to leave. I want you to have the chance to finish and give us your take on whether or not Ben Crump will be allowed to stay. Thanks, Kelly. Basically, as we were saying, the rules of sequestration are imposed so that potential witnesses cannot hear the testimony of others who are taking the stand and hence have their subsequent testimony influenced. So that's the reason and the basis for rules of sequestration. The rules, however, also say that the families of a victim, who clearly Trayvon's parents are, should be entitled to stay. So there's a, 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 an issue, a, a conflict as are they witnesses or are they uh, family members of the victim. Well, the judge, I think, appropriately ruled that the parents should be there. This is their son who was killed, and they, they want to be there. The issue, though, becomes their attorney, Benjamin Crump. Should he be allowed to be there also? Because the rules say family members or their legal representative. Well, I just noted as they were going through that, it doesn't say in the, in the conjunctive and their legal representative, but in the disjunctive or their legal representative. Well, Benjamin Crump, as we know, it went up on the Fifth District Court of Appeal, does have to give a deposition, and he's representing the family, and as long as I think the victim's family is there, which they have every right, I think, to be, then the issue now becomes, will Benjamin Crump be permitted to come back in? And as we know, he's been a very strong, passionate advocate on behalf of the family, but he's really been wearing multiple hats, more than two, actually. And so I think that the judge did the right thing, let the law be reviewed. Opening arguments are just, uh, they're not facts of the case. And they'll make a decision after the law is reviewed when um, they come back after a lunch break and determine whether Benjamin Crump will be allowed to stay in the courtroom or not. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for that explanation. You can see there on your screen, that was Benjamin Crump being asked to leave the courtroom as well. We did see the Zimmerman family also leaving the courtroom as ordered. All right, a live look inside that courtroom right now. They are still speaking with the judge. It appears as if it might be breaking up, and they will be getting ready to bring the jury in. That jury is made up of six, four alternates, and six all women on that jury. Now, they'll be getting their instructions. Let's go back in the courtroom. Um, 